listen only mode. All right, let's uh, begin today's webinar. My name is Rob Altamont, and I'll be your moderator for today's RICA webinar, The Basics of Shaft Cutting. The webinar will be led by Harico's Technical Director, Jeff Summit. A little bit of background about Jeff. Jeff's worked in all facets of club making and repair since 1984 and has devoted the past 20 years to researching, testing, and analyzing thousands of different golf shafts. He has compiled his findings and research into the Dynamic Shaft Fitting Index, which is featured in the best-selling book, The Modern Guide to Club Making and Total Club Fitting in the 21st Century. Additionally, he has authored the annual Dynamic Shaft Fitting Addendum, which instructs club fitters in the proper fitting and selection of, book, of uh, shafts. And both the Modern Guide to Club Making and Total Club Fitting in the 21st Century are available for sale online on our website, harikogolf.com. Your audio settings are muted. And if you look at your GoToWebinar dashboard located in the upper right-hand corner of your screen, you'll see the box labeled Question. Feel free to type any questions or problems you may have throughout the webinar. Because we have limited time, we're saving the question and answer period for the end when Jeff has completed his talk. If you must leave your web webinar, leave this webinar. Don't worry. It is being recorded and will be posted on YouTube and in our blog at blog.haricogolf.com. And that's it for the introduction, so I'd like to turn it over to Jeff. Thank you, Rob, and thank all of you uh, for taking the time on tax day today uh, to attend today's webinar on the principles of cutting all types of golf shafts. In our last webinar, we discussed the principles of shaft trimming, including a look at bore types, trimming notes, cutting in between flexes, and even providing a few examples. Now you should be able to confidently read the shaft trimming charts. Once we have identified how much to trim and from where on the shaft, then our next step is cutting the shaft the right way. And with many graphite shafts trending toward the $100 figure and beyond, it's important not to make a costly mistake. Realize that shaft manufacturers or component suppliers are not going to warrant shafts that have been trimmed improperly. I'd like to start out by saying that there's really no one right way to build a golf club. Think of scoring a touchdown in football. You can run the ball or you could pass the ball. The end result's the same. Club makers can assemble clubs with a variety of tools that may, or may possibly be in their home shop, some which may be manual devices, while large volume club makers may elect to equip their shop with motorized devices to speed up the process. A club maker or repair shop could potentially encounter shafts and, ex and shaft extenders made from uh, different uh, materials, uh, from carbon steel, steel alloys, titanium, aluminum, fiberglass, graphite, and other composite materials. Standard weight carbon steel, uh, some lightweight steel alloys, aluminum, and titanium can be cut with a variety of tools, from a simple tubing cutter to a motorized device such as an abrasive cutoff uh, saw. In uh, contrast, graphite and composite type shafts are best cut with uh, abrasive cutting devices to pre prevent uh, splintering the shaft. Now, which tool or method is used will, to be, uh, will be dependent on what level of tool investment you want to make in your shop, as well as what shaft materials you're going to be cutting. But it's important, let me change the screen here. But it's important that you choose among the uh, following methods of cutting the shaft that's going to fit your budget. Let's talk about the tubing cutter or pipe cutter first. It's a low cost method, at least initially, for cutting steel shafts. These are not designed to cut composite or graphite shafts. Uh, there may be specialty wheels available, but the stock wheels will splinter these types of shafts. Therefore, I suggest only using the tubing cutter strictly for steel shafts. Now, you could pick up a tubing cutter and even the extra wheels at your local hardware or home improvement store. I say extra wheels because there's only a limited amount of cuts you can make before the blade becomes dull and no longer efficient. How long, you ask? Well, maybe long enough to cut two or three sets of irons. Because remember, each steel shaft, you're most likely to get a, you're going to cut off both ends. Now the key to using a tubing cutter is to gradually build up the pressure. 
you want to avoid over tightening the tubing cut, uh, cutter as there's a potential of cracking the shaft, especially on today's uh, lightweight steel shafts weighing under 100 grams. Over tightening can also reduce the life of your tubing cutter blade. Now special uh, care should be focused on the butt end. Why? Well, if you look closely, you'll see it's the thinnest portion of the shaft, and over tightening can cause it to go, go out around. Luckily, the tip of the shaft is much thicker, and you won't, have, you won't run into that same problem. Now, the best way to use your tubing cutter is to align the blade um, on your mark where you want it to cut. You snug up the wheel, uh, but still allow it to spin around the shaft in a straight line. You want to be careful that you don't have the wheel walk or, or stray off your mark uh, when you spin it. Otherwise, this is going to affect how much you trim the shaft. And after several turns, you're going to want to tighten the handle to increase the tension and then continue to spin around your shaft. Now, depending on the sharpness of your wheel, you may have to repeat this step a few times. Uh, you can perform this operation with the shaft in a vice clamp or even freehand. It's whatever you feel most comfortable with. Just when you're about to cut through the shaft, you might be able to snap off the piece of shaft you're cutting off, or it'll just simply fall to the ground. Now, due to the pressure from cutting, uh, the shaft will have a small burr develop. It's, it's probably best to remove that now. Otherwise, that piece could break off and create a, a, a rattle later on. Oftentimes, there's a retractable or a foldable reamer on your tubing cutter that you can simply rotate into the freshly cut shaft to remove the burr. It's that little black pointy thing if you ever wondered what that was for. Now, here's one little trick for cutting small amounts like a half inch or less. It may be pretty hard, if not impossible, to do with the tubing cutter. In those cases, you might need to put a part of an old uh, U-shaft or an extender to support the tubing cutter. Now, continuing on with our manual method of cutting shafts, let's take a look at a hacksaw. While a typical hacksaw blade can be used to cut steel, I don't really recommend it. First, the smooth chrome uh, surface makes it difficult to cut a nice clean line, and it'll want to slip. So when I say hacksaw, I should re really refer to as hacksaw frame, which, by the way, is a great way to cut graphite and composite shafts. The only difference is in the blade. You see, a normal hacksaw blade has teeth that are serrated along both edges of the blade, which can splinter the fibers, potentially causing breakage at a later time. Try running your fingers along the side of a, a hacksaw blade if you don't believe me. Now, what you want to use is a special blade. Um, one is a grit edge blade, and the other is a rod saw blade, uh, which you can obtain at your local hardware store or through a few component distributors. These don't have teeth at all. Rather, they have a coarse grip material on the uh, cutting, edge, cutting edge of the blade. Now, when you use either one of these uh, blades to cut a composite shaft, it's best to tape the portion of the shaft with masking tape. And we do this for a couple reasons. First, many graphite shafts are black. And the use of masking tape just assists in properly marking the area you want to cut with a black Sharpie pen. The top picture shows you how hard it is to see the mark on the, um, on the shaft, uh, like the bottom picture on this slide. And secondly, by wrapping tape around the shaft, this reduces the likelihood that you can splinter uh, the shaft or delaminate it during the uh, cutting process. And whenever cutting a graphite shaft manually, these really need to be clamped in a padded vice clamp. And you want to avoid um, over clamping as well, especially on today's lightweight graphite shafts. Otherwise, you can potentially crack the shaft. One trick is to uh, 